Fort Wayne is back in the campaign spotlight as Vice President Mike Pence addresses Hoosiers at a rally. Wayne 15 is your local election headquarters, covering you from every angle. Including an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Vice President Pence. And a Roanoke barber has become a bit of a political lucky charm as candidates stop in for a cut and then go on to win. Wayne 15 News at 6 starts now. A busy day for politics in Fort Wayne as Vice President Mike Pence rallies Republicans right here in the fort. Wayne 15's Chris Darby joins us now live from the Fort Wayne Aero Center. Chris. Indeed, Dirk. A lot of hurry up and wait as goes politics, but most of the Really, the politicians we know from our area gathered here in one spot at the Fort Wayne Aero Center at the Fort Wayne International Airport. Vice President Mike Pence just walked out of this room I'm standing in right now. We got just a couple of minutes and a couple of questions with him exclusively, the only ones here locally that were able to talk to the Vice President. We talked to him about why he's in Indiana right now during these last few two weeks of the election and COVID and a little something a little more lighthearted. You can see that right now. Chris Darby here with the Vice President. Welcome back, as I said. Thank you. Great to be back home again in Indiana. Absolutely. So we want to do a couple of more serious questions, and then we'll get to something hopefully a little more lighthearted. <laughs> but uh, the campaign stop in Indiana, a little surprising to some. How important is Indiana here in this election? Any concerns about turnout here? Uh, Karen and I will be uh, uh, participating in early voting in Indianapolis tomorrow. And with stop in Michigan today, we thought uh, it was an irresistible opportunity <laughs> to come to Fort Wayne. Uh, you know, I, uh, everything I've been able to do in my life, uh, serving in the Congress, um, uh, serving as governor, and now serving as vice president uh, for these last three and a half years, I owe to the grace of God, to my family, and the support of the people of Indiana. So I just, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to come by and, and tell our story about why we need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House right here in Allen County. Indiana's been I don't want to say leading the way, but one of the first states to really be ahead on reopening with the right. COVID pandemic. Right. Is that something other states should follow or any words for the people who see that move forward and are starting to think, I'm over this, it's time to go back to normal? Well, we've worked very closely with Governor Holcomb um, and all of his health officials throughout the course of this pandemic. And I, I really want to commend the people of Indiana, doctors and nurses, healthcare providers, first responders, uh, and the governor uh, for the way that uh, they've all responded to the, the guidance and direction from our very best health officials. Um, Indiana's opening up again. Hundreds of thousands of people have gone back to work. We've literally seen 11 and a half million Americans already go back to work. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we're, we're just going to continue to make sure as we're seeing some cases rising across the heartland uh, that uh, as the governor and I discussed today, uh, that our hospitals, our doctors have all the supplies they need, that our schools have all the testing that they need to keep our kids in the classroom, keep them safe and sound. Uh, but the good news is, is that we are, uh, we're coming up on what we believe will be the first safe and effective coronavirus vaccine before the end of this year. And under Operation Warp Speed, we expect to have 100 million doses of a new vaccine available to distribute to the American people uh, before the year is out. So we're making great progress. We're opening up again, but we're going to continue to work closely with the governor, with health officials, with schools to make sure that we do it safely. Now the more the lighthearted thing, as we said, being from Indiana, a lot of people are proud to have someone from Indiana in the White House. What's the best thing Indiana does? What do you, what do you brag about when you cross the country to other states that Indiana does the best? Well, I say in Indiana, we do two things really well. We make things and we grow things, <laughs> and we're proud of it. Uh, but um, when I was governor of this state, I said, and as a proud Hoosier, I still believe that Indiana really is the heart of the heartland. I mean, in so many ways, the, the values that are synonymous with everything that makes this country great, faith and family and freedom, really resonate uh, with the people all across this state. And so it's, it's one of the reasons why it's always great to be home, not just to see our extended family and friends, but also just to, to reconnect with those Hoosier roots and those Hoosier values. And, um, uh, and it was uh, very meaningful for me to be here in Fort Wayne today. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Our coverage will continue on Wayne.com with that interview. Of course, everything that happened here at the campaign rally. Uh, and as the governor now 
moves on to the governor, the former governor, now vice president, moves on to Ohio as part of this campaign tour for himself and President Donald Trump. For now, live at the Fort Wayne Aero Center, Chris Darby, Wayne 15 News. Chris, good work. As we've seen, politicians busy getting votes this time of year. A Roanoke barber has become a bit of a political lucky charm as candidates stop in for a cut and then go on to win. You might call Rex a shortcut to election victory. It seems like it's become uh, the rite of passage. If you want to get elected in Indiana, you got to go to Rex's barber shop. How do you become a barber to the politicians? Rex Ottinger says it doesn't hurt if your shop is just steps away from Joseph Dequee, a popular spot for political fundraisers. I cut uh, Dan Coates, Senator Dan Coates, and Mike Pence was here, <laughs> absolutely. Jim Banks was uh, here, uh, cut his hair. Um, he and, and the governor, uh, Governor Holcomb. Which the governor still remembers. The quality of the cut, because uh, I've often said that throughout this pandemic, uh, my hair looks like a crime scene. And it's just such a, a almost a Norman Rockwell painting. And, and to be in, you know, Roanoke and the just the, it's almost like visual overload. And then to get a great haircut, it just kind of not again, not take you back in time. It just takes you to a better place. After 61 years, Rex has learned a thing or two about cutting hair. The secret to a good haircut is to get it the way the customer wants it. And talking politics. People are uh, very adamant about their politics or their sports team. It just is sometimes it's just uh, better to be a good listener than to uh, talk too much. Even with more than half a million haircuts given, Rex says there's still one political figure he wouldn't mind having in his chair. I often think about what I would do with Donald Trump's hair. Well, you know, I would shorten the back, a side part, and, um, and maybe clean him up a little bit more. He's, he's more in the uh, 1970s look. and you know, would probably bring him up to date a little. And Rex wants to stress he can cut your hair no matter your politics. Absolutely. Um, I, I tell all my Democrat friends they're welcome to come in, you know, but as I say, it seems to be the rite of passage to the uh, Republicans to come in and uh, get their hair cut, and then they are um, elected to office and, uh, or re-elected. Now, none of the politicians has stopped by this election cycle, although Jim Banks does have a fundraiser near Roanoke tonight. We'll let you know if any of them stop by and if their luck continues on Election Day. Still to come on Wayne 15 News at 6, Election Day is just 12 days away. We continue our House Divided series with reaction from voters across the political spectrum when your number one news at 6 returns. Local coverage you can count on continues with Tara Brantley and Dirk Rowley. You're watching Wayne 15 News at 6. As your local election headquarters, Wayne 15's exclusive A House Divided project is adding some local perspective to the big stories. Now just 12 days away from Election Day, our Advancing Voices of Women panelists are weighing in one last time. Tonight, Wayne 15's Alyssa Ivinson continues the civil conversation. Nationally, early voting is six times higher than it was at this point four years ago, so the previous presidential election. In Allen County, 16,000 ballots have been cast so far compared to the 6,000 at this time four years ago. What is your reaction to those early voting numbers? There's been a lot of concern stirred up by what the president has said about voting, and I think people want to get their vote in there and know that it is recorded without any doubt. I think COVID kind of plays into it too. I, I think, you know, people may not want to be spending long lines, at, you know, at the poll crammed together. Um, I'm planning to vote this Friday just to kind of avoid that, that rush that day. Just, you know, I have the day off and I'm going to use it to you know, exercise my right to vote. Um, so I think that that plays a lot into it too. Just the number of people that are going to vote in this election. This truly, I think, is one of the most important elections of our lifetime. Um, so the number of people, the pandemic, um, just, the, just the uncertainty around this election in general, I, I think that that's what's driving those numbers. I think it also shows that people's um, decision has maybe been decided for a while. And, um, you know, they're not waiting for all the debates or, you know, last minute election. Uh, or campaign, you know, activity that their their vote was decided, you know, a while ago. Well, I, we are doing something that uh, 
is unusual. We applied for absentee ballots, my husband and I, because we qualify by age and intended to because of the epidemic. But the more I heard about what's being said about the mail-in voting, I decided I didn't feel good about what might happen. And so we are actually going to take our absentee ballots unfilled and go and vote in person early and turn them in, which you can do. Because I, again, I want it recorded for sure. I don't want any doubt about it. It seems like too, in 2016, we know that there was a lot of uh, disinformation that the Russians put out on the election. And as we get closer to the, to the, to election day, I think um, that there is some uncertainty, bit uncertainty about things that could happen or events or so I know I wanted to go and, and vote early just to make sure it was done to not leave it up to chance to not to, you know, any uncertainty that could happen on election day, I didn't want to be a part of. So I think I agree with mostly what what's been said here too about that. So we've heard three of you have or will be voting early for the remaining three. Are you waiting until election day? Uh, I actually also qualify for an absentee ballot. And so I will be mailing in my vote probably this week for the same reason um, that others have said. I want to make sure that it counts and that it gets there with plenty of time and that there's no uh, question as to um, its legitimacy. Yeah, I plan on voting in person on election day. I as well. Local coverage you can count on continues with Glenn Marini's Sports Report. Sports coverage you can count on. Everyone deserves the opportunity to enjoy doing the thing they love. That's exactly what the unified flag football team at Carroll High School is doing. The program combining students with disabilities and students without together on the same team all in the name of fun and competition. Colton Howard checking in with the Unified Chargers squad after a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity at the state finals over the weekend. The Carroll Chargers adding new hardware to the trophy case. It felt great. I mean, like, either way, we're all winners. Especially McCutcheon was a great team. They played great. They just were better than us. But, hey, we're all winners because we both won trophies. We got medals. We're going to get reigns. Like, we're all going to be equally fair. In the third annual flag football state tournament, Carroll making history as the first team from Fort Wayne to make it to the state finals. It, it was awesome. The, uh, the kids had a great time. We were really excited. We got a police escort out of here. You know, kids were definitely nervous. You can see it in their play a little bit, but uh, it was a great time uh, from beginning to end. At first, I was nervous about it, and I told myself, AJ, you, you have confidence. You don't, you don't be nervous. You be a man, and then you come out here. Yeah, I mean, that's how I did. Displaying proudly in the Charger Trophy case, the 2020 Unified Flag Football Runners-Up Trophy. But if you ask these student athletes, it's not about the medals or the awards. Those things are nice, but it's about getting the chance to compete and have fun while doing it. It's so fun, it's so fun. And that's what's good about Unified, just it gives us the fun of being together as a team. Not only did the Chargers come together as a team, but Carroll coming together as a school and as a community to support these athletes. Having that so much support makes you feel like there's something in life. And it made us feel like, you know, this is more than, you know, a sport. This is more than just having fun. This is a family and we felt like we were really connected. Miller joining this program when it first started three years ago, not knowing where this journey would take him, but he's thankful for the ride. You just try your hardest at everything you do, because you never say no to an opportunity. So I, I said yes to this opportunity, and look where it got me now. It doesn't matter who the kids are, what classroom they sit in. If you set a bar at a certain level, they'll get there. If you set the bar low, that's where they're gonna hang out. But if you, if you, if you have expectations and you set the bar high, they will reach that. Individually, they're all student athletes, but they're champions together. For Wayne 15 Sports, I'm Colton Howard. Congratulations indeed to the Carroll Chargers. Hey, coming up at 11, we're gonna hear from both the Columbia City Eagles and the East Noble Knights to preview your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. But for now, I'm Glenn Marini, and that's your local sports report. 
Local coverage you can count on continues with Chief Meteorologist Nicholas Ferrari's live Doppler 15 Fury forecast. Thursday night and it is umbrella time. Umbrellas have sure been put to good use this week with all the rain we've been experiencing. Our winner tonight, Wanda Fender Brunner of Auburn. Wanda, you'll be hearing from our umbrella department as to how you can pick up your umbrella. Everyone else, enter your name in the contest at wayne.com slash contest. We give away an umbrella every week at this time. The rain that we had early today moved out, it shifted to the north. A warm front moved on through and we've been enjoying a warm southwesterly flow of air all day long. A flow of air that has boosted our high temperatures in Fort Wayne into the upper 70s, close to 80. But look off to the northwest. 35 was as warm as it got in Minneapolis today. 43 in Green Bay. And it's that cold air that will soon be shifting into our area to bring about a big change for the weekend. We're going to see a 20 degree plus temperature drop from our highs tomorrow to what we experience on Saturday and Sunday. And next week, the cold fall air, it is firmly in place. The 10 day forecast does not really show much of a fluctuation day to day. It's just a lot of fall chill. 75 our current temperature now. No chill in the air at all. Winds from the south southwest at 10 miles per hour. Over the course of the next 12 hours, things remain warm for an October night. Temperatures fall out of the 70s and into the 60s, and that's where we stay into early morning. On Futurecast tonight, you can see some scattered clouds in the sky. That's about it. Not much to report in that department. By morning, a few sprinkles possible. The cold front makes its way closer and closer to us, but really our best chances at rain tomorrow come once we get to midday and go through the afternoon. 65 at 7 in the morning in Fort Wayne. We will be able to make it in the low 70s come early afternoon before the cold air starts to move in. This is 11 o'clock with rain coming into view off to the northwest of Fort Wayne. Over the course of the afternoon, rain and thunderstorms scatter through. We will have windy moments with this front. Could have wind gusts up to around 30 miles per hour at times. Once we get to Friday night football hours, well, the heaviest rain will be east of us. Still possible, though, we could have a scattered sprinkle in a few spots. At 9 in the morning, 68. At 11, 70. At 1 o'clock, 70. At 370 at 5, our temperature 63. You can see how those temperatures start to fall off as we get past early afternoon. By evening time for Friday night football, there will be a chill in the air at that point. 59 degrees our temperature would kick off. By the end of the games, we'll be down in the low 50s around 53. Now a look at your exclusive 10 day forecast. After tomorrow's high of 73, we are at 50 for Saturday and Sunday. Saturday has a little bit more sunshine than Sunday does. Monday, some rain possible, 52. Tuesday, 47. Then we're dry on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and into the following weekend. Next Wednesday, 50. Thursday, 51. Friday, 45. On Saturday, that's Halloween, 49 and partly cloudy. Sunday, 46 for November 1st. That's your latest forecast. More news after this. Local coverage you can count on continues with Tara Brantley and Dirk Rowley. You're watching Wayne 15 News at 6. Many who couldn't attend Vice President Pence's rally parked outside of the Fort Wayne International Airport gate to show their support. Wayne 15's Britt Soleil joins us now live outside with more. Britt. All right, Dirk, I'm out here at the Fort Wayne Aero Center where Vice President Mike Pence just wrapped up his rally a little bit ago. Earlier, we did see cars parked almost bumper to bumper on both sides of the road leading up to the, le leading up to the building. Excuse me. But as of now, uh, people are starting to leave. Uh, you know, when President Trump came to town in 2016, we saw crowds of people just waiting outside the Coliseum while Trump spoke, as well as protesters. We didn't see a lot of that today. Uh, they filled up to capacity just before four. Only one protester came out and was arguing, but they've since left. So all the action was really inside of that building today. Now, people are still in the process of leaving. Pence himself left on plane just a few minutes ago, and now they're sort of clearing the area. There, was, uh, there was an RV selling merchandise that is still up, uh, but looks like they might be getting ready to uh, tear down and head on out of here as well. We've been out here uh, talking to protesters all day. A lot of people said their minds were already, sorry, not protesters, supporters all day. And a lot of them have said their minds are already made up. They just wanted to come out here and show their support for the people that they want to win this election. Coming up on Nightcast, we'll have a full wrap of what those people had to say and of the rally itself. You can also head over to Wayne.com. Reporting live, I'm Britt Soleil. Thanks for watching.